Hey guys, Scott Foley here, coming to you from the Sheffield City Hall. I'm on tour with Rumours of Fleetwood Mac, and it's time to do a rig rundown again. Slightly different rig for this tour. A lot of the same guitars, but we've got a few new additions, particularly to the rig. So without further ado, let's get on with it. First guitar is the Fleetwood Mac guitar, the Rick Turner Model 1, hand-built by Rick Turner and his team. Sadly, we lost Rick Turner earlier this year, just, just a few weeks ago. What a lovely guy Rick Turner was, really, really top bloke. But this is one of his finest um, solid mahogany construction, this beautiful laminated neck with the purple heart and maple and all sorts of kind of cool woods. There's a whole video about this on my channel, which I'll link in the top right hand corner. Rick actually signed this guitar on the back here. So that's a good little memory. Um, it's owned by the show. It's consistent, strung with 10 to 52 gauge strings as a most, actually all of my electrics. Last time I did a rig rundown, I said I don't use the preamp. Well, actually I am doing for one song only on this tour, which is Landslide. I'm playing the solo on the electric guitar this time. I was playing the acoustic on the last tour. So for that, I am using the preamp, which is built in, which has got this semi-parametric EQ. So you can see it's all marked out on the front. A couple of batteries under here to power the preamp and this outrageously loud soap bar pickup. Very unique sound. The pickup rotates. That's the key to this guitar as well. You can actually see, just get up closer to this camera, you see the pickup actually rotates within its position, but we lock it down to give the closest to the Lindsay Buckingham sound. So that's that guitar, the Rick Turner Model 1. This is a cracking guitar, I love playing this guitar. It's the Gretsch G9220 with the Fishman pickup system in it. It's a consistent, good quality resonator that you can use on tour and the quite budget friendly these guitars so I use this on songs like The Chain all that kind of stuff we use it on world turning not with the capo on but and we use it on Golders Woman with the slide and all that stuff and I am using this now through a Fishman Jerry Douglas Aura pedal which gives the most accurate resonator representation through to our sound team so that's on my pedal board which i'll show you in a minute well this is a killer guitar uh, we replaced the tuners on this this is strung with elixir strings there are 13 set 13 gauge set but with a 15 on the top e so super heavy strings but for slide we just change that e out for a slightly thicker string it gives a better sound when you play slide so that's that guitar this is the golden nylon string that's owned by the show it's a nylon string guitar but it's very thin like an electric guitar, almost kind of feels a little bit like a Telecaster. I use this for Big Love and a Stevie Nicks song called Rooms on Fire. So that's this guitar, it's got the piezo saddles located within the bridge. Um, it has got like 13 pin MIDI outputs and all that stuff, we don't use any of that, just the pickup that's built into the guitar. So. This is the Line 6 JTV 59 Variax, kind of Les Paul style Variax, but it has the digital modeling system built in. So you can change tunings. And for instance, if you need a Strat type sound, then this has it built in on this knob here. Master volume, master tone, stock pickups, stock most things on this guitar, apart from the tuners, because we put locking Goto tuners, because they're the best and a bone knot on it. So that's that mahogany body, strung with 10 to 52s. Um, yeah, and it's consistent. This is also the ultimate spur guitar. For me, if anything goes wrong, or we have to do a fly date where I don't have the choice of bringing all these guitars, we can just use the Variax for most of it and just rent an acoustic wherever we go. So that's the Line 6 Variax, great guitar. This is another favorite. This is a recording king. It's got the torrified or roasted top on it and it, do you know what this is a great guitar it's it's great i mean i use this for most of the acoustic stuff don't get me wrong i'd rather play my martin but for live this is brilliant it's got this great pickup in it the lr bags anthem which is just the best acoustic pickup in my opinion um what else have we done to this guitar there's not many mods we put a bone nut on it because we put bone nuts on everything. If you're interested in improving the sound of your guitar, then I'd advise you go and check out these. These are the FU Tone Titanium Bridge Pins. I've got brass ones on the Takamini, which I'll show you in a minute. They're equally cool, just slightly different sound, but that really they really opened up the sound of this guitar. So 
that's the recording king strung up with gauge 12 elixir nano web strings this is the other acoustic guitar that we i mean we don't really use this that much on the tour we use it for second hand news for a song in the set and we use it for never going back again which is in a crazy tuning with a drop c on the e string but this is a takamini santa fe um it's a really nice guitar this with beautiful inlays and stuff um i'll get them on that camera there but yeah it's a cool guitar um it just perhaps doesn't sound quite as natural plugged in as the LR bag system in the recording king. This is the one with the brass Effutone bridge pins, which again just improved the sound of this guitar. Bone nut, refretted, strung up with gauge 12 elixirs also. While I'm on the subject, shub capos. Easy, convenient. We use a, a G7 for one of the guitars, but the shubs for live not really found anything better if you recommend anything better then drop a note in the comments but that's the takamini cool guitar this is the peter green guitar my les paul standard faded we're trying out some different pickups in this guitar at the moment and i can't really say an awful lot about them because we're developing them i had ox4 pickups mark stowe in oxford and they're great too but these I don't know, I kind of feel like these have the edge at the moment, but we'll see on that one. But they're still the reverse magnet, Peter Green style pickups, so they sound great. It's got locking tuners. These are great for you Les Paul players out there. Goto uh, locking Les Paul style tuners. Also, we've got this little tuner that I may have mentioned last time, which is when I'm down at the front of the stage, I can always just turn it on and have a quick tune up on stage. A lot of the guitars have these Jim Dunlop strap locks just because they keep the guitars from falling off when we're touring and there's so many guitar changes in this show as well it just makes common sense also talking about straps i have this beautiful strap on this guitar that was kindly given to me by pine grove leather and it's beautiful it's this dragon style model that they've just come out with and i really appreciate them passing this on because i absolutely love it if you're interested in get a new leather strap or they make all sorts of stuff then go and check them out and tell them scott sent you because they're great people and they make great stuff finally in guitar world for those of you who followed my channel you will know about a little experiment with a strap that i've been undertaking here it is harley benton bought this for 30 pounds which is about 40 dollars used and I said I'm going to take it to recording sessions and take it on tour. Well, here it is on tour. We're using it on like maybe five songs in the set, four or five songs, something like that. It's had a modification. Tell a new jack socket. That's it. Put a Neutrik jack socket because we use all Neutrik silent jacks on stage, um, the connectors. So when you unplug it, it doesn't make a noise. There's so many guitar changes. Makes sense. And the original one didn't work with that. So that's a good mod. But yeah, we spent three pounds or about know, four or five dollars on that. But other than that, the guitar is completely stock other than being set up. So we're using it and I'm going to give this guitar away to someone who wants to use it. That's the idea. Um, and check out the other videos about this guitar as well, because it's a bit of a cool journey with this instrument. But if you're interested in winning this guitar, then I'll leave all the details in the description below. You may see this little bit of tape on the side. Quite often when you're touring at this level with the big light show and everything, it just goes completely dark and you can't see at the start of a song, which is what happened to me the other night. So we just put a bit of day glow gaffer tape. Some of the other guitars, the acoustics particularly, have glow in the dark inlays that I had fitted to the guitars. Um, but this is the more budget <laughs> friendly version of that. So that's the Harley Benton strap. It's been consistent. It sounds remarkably good. I mean, for a guitar that retails new at £70 is, is quite insane. Finally, this is the Go Your Own Way guitar. Uh, this doesn't fit in the rack because it's massive. I mean, the depth of this thing, it's huge. It's like a bigger Gibson J200. Uh, we use this for one song only in the set and it's Go Your Own Way. It's completely stock. It's this guitar stays in tune like nothing else in the world it's amazing it sounds great it's got the fishman pickup system installed sounds great so i'm just on my side of the stage not a lot has changed here we're still using the fractal axe 3 systems they're pretty consistent they sound 
decent and they're provided by the show, so that's that. I run two expression pedals, one exclusively for volume, and the other one I use a boost for certain songs, but rather than having it foot switched, I use the expression pedal to kind of roll the boost in. It just helps, you know, if I want to push through a little bit, I can do that rather than just going full boost on or off, or like it has a, you know, the delay amount, for instance, I can increase or decrease on that. That's connected to the Axe FX, so very straightforward. Other than that, I'm running my guitar through an ABC switch that I'm only using the AB side of. So that's a cable, which is here, with the Neutrik silent jack that goes into my guitar when I'm here. And then I have the Line 6 wireless, and we'll get back to that in a minute, because that's a cool, kind of interesting link. The only thing left on my pedal board is the Fishman or a Jerry Douglas pedal, which I was talking about earlier. It's all taped up at the moment, but I'm using preset 10, whatever that is. I'll put, it, put that right about there. Um, but that makes my resonator guitar sound like a resonator live. So, I actually have a second full rig, and it's for when I play the blues set. I play the Peter Green, we do four Peter Green songs in this set. So, I use the Line 6 wireless, which is down here, and the wireless actually splits the guitar signal. One send goes into the fractal and one send goes into a pedal board which i have downstage all of that then funnels into my milkman amp this is the new thing so i'm using a head again a tube head for the blue set but it's just this little tiny amp that's just behind me it's got it sounds amazing it's got a tube in the front end but a transformer output section so it's small it's convenient it sounds awesome it's consistent we love it it's great also if we play some difficult venues we can also DI that into the system with the speaker simulator. As far as speakers go, Little Walter 1x12 cab with the Celestian G12 75 watt speaker. Sounds great. Love the Little Walter gear. I use the head all the time in the studio at home. Picks, I'm using the green Tortex now. I was using the yellow ones but moved to the green. Magslide, there's another video about Magslide on my channel. This is the lightweight um, Aurora model. It's great, it's lightweight, it sounds awesome. We love Magslide, they're great. Go and check out Magslide. I have one extra switch, which is we play to a click for certain songs for media purposes, because we've got a huge media show, all the lights and stuff are all controlled. So I start the songs with this other switch, which is an Elgado Stream Deck switch. So I'm down at the front of the stage now to, this is where I play the bulk of the Peter Green set. I've got my Les Paul that I use for all the Peter Green stuff. And this is going through my pedal board here into the Milkman amplifier into the little Walter cabinet. So this is without any of the effects on the board. So it's kind of like a mildly overdriven, you know, just kind of cleanish sound. I've got a little bit of reverb on the amp. I also use the tremolo built into the amp for a song called Need Your Love So Bad. Uh, so the pedals I'm using here, Boss Tuner TU3, because they're consistent. I use this little modified Boss Blues driver for a boost. This is without it. With it. It. So you see it just kicks it up for a solo or something like that. Another pedal I've been actually given to use on this tour and it's working out brilliantly is the Analog Pedals ATG828 Overdrive. Use this for a song called Green Manalishi. So without it, this is with it. Just a nice kind of warm noble style overdrive really like that pedal actually it's been great and the eq is really really versatile on it as well so we like that pedal a lot i can also stack the two pedals together which is really cool just for the end of black magic woman where we go into a big solo using a line 6 m5 here for a couple of things particularly for albatross i use it to do this with it on few people think I'm miming that and I'm not I'm using the line 6 m5 just to give me the harmony part while James or the guitarist uses a different 
uh, plays the other slide part. So. And then I'm using the expression pedal to change the harmony for. Then back for Albatross. I uh, also use it as a compressor for the beginning of Black Magic Woman. So without it, with it. Gives us a stain, mate. Right, reverb. One plus those spring reverb. Love that. It's a great sounding, very natural sounding reverb pedal. I also have the Bright Onion Pedals AB switch. I'm using the cable at the moment. I'm normally on a wireless down here, but just in case anything goes wrong with the wireless, it's always worth having an emergency. Oh, the wireless is broken switch. And we have a cable down here. So that's the rig, very straightforward. Rooms of the Fleetwood Mac 2022 rig rundown with our, the best depth bass player this <laughs> price point can afford. <laughs> Got Wayne Banks, wonderful bass player for you, Robin Gibb. Yeah. Joe Lynn Turner and various other. Yeah. yeah. It, Wayne's an incredible bass player and we're probably honoured to have him on board and he's a to all round top guy too. Thank you very much, Scott. Got a selection of really cool bases yeah. here, Wayne. So let's have a little look through these. Let's have a look at number one first because this is quite a piece of kit, isn't it? Yeah, it's my main bass. Can we take a little look at this, Wayne? Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. So this is a set, is it 70s P it's bass? It's a this? 78 P bass. I've had this since I was 18 years old. Um, I've replaced everything. So it's now got, it's got an old, an old school badass bridge there. Yeah. One of, the, one of the last ones that were around. I've got Seymour Duncan SPB1, which is a basic vintage precision pickup. So yeah. I don't go in for all this. I play a lot of rock and stuff like that, but I don't go in for all the hot pickups and all this kind of thing because they're just pushing, they're EQing it. And that to me is a lovely flat. That's EQ. really interesting. Cause you would have thought for, for most rock players, the gut is to, Put as big I've a tried as possible. B believe me, I've tried every one of the hot pickups going and various other brands that I don't want to slag off. But basically, I've tried all of them and these, you just get that basic sound and all the mids are in the right place, the highs are in the right place. Yeah. You know, some of the ones that are just are vamped up, like the lows are too much or yeah. the highs are too... I get it. You lose the soul of it and I've tried active pickups and everything. I mean, under, under here is a... It's, it's, a a, it's a nightmare. It's, yeah. a, it's a rabbit warren of, uh, of me trying to experiment. But, and, uh, just, and just basic volume and tone controls exactly. on this. Yeah. So, and you've done the, the Billy Sheehan sculpting, I noticed, I, on the maple. I did, book. but strangely enough, we, it, we did that when we were about 18. Yeah. And, and we weren't being Billy Sheehan. My friend wanted to be Malmsteen. So of he course. did his whole strat. And then we, we were going to do the same with my bass, would you believe? Not realising oh. what I'd got in my hands. Yeah. And uh, we got this far and then couldn't be bothered. Because <laughs> it was too much work. Yeah. And then realised later that Billy Sheehan had done a similar thing. That's and so I was cool. Like, I was like, hey, Maybe he copied it off idea. you. <laughs> who knows? <laughs> yeah, who knows? Um, <laughs> other things that have been changed, has it been refretted or anything over it's the years? Never, it's never been refretted. It's, it, it's been looked at, looked after yeah. by some great luthiers called Experienced Guitars in Nottingham who, who do all my guitars. That's and have awesome. done forever. Uh, and, and Kat, who works there, she is basically catalogued everything she's ever done to my basses for, for years and years. That's incredible. And so knows the setup on every single guitar to the point where I won't take it anywhere else. It's like, yeah, unless Kat says it's good, I'm not using it. I have you know? a similar thing on my channel as um, a bunch of stuff with Phil, my guy from Doghouse mm. Guitar Repairs, who's done, he did a load of setup videos for a, for a guitar I've been using on this mm. tour. And he's just like, he knows exactly yeah. what I need and where yeah. my setup is. You find you find that person and that's it. Yeah, absolutely. So that's the main base, and you're using that for the bulk of the show on this, aren't you? Really? Yeah, I mean, I use it for the bulk of everything. I mean, yeah. this, this base is probably recorded about 200 old albums, easy. That's you know? amazing. Um, what a piece of kit! And it's, I've got the hip shot on. Yeah, there. the hip shot detuner. Yeah. yeah, which is very handy. Oh, I use um, uh, road sound strings. And I, I actually use the Billy Sheer ones because um, because of the the, the gauge really. I like standard gauge strings, but um, he always said in his adverts that he uh, uses the 110 gauge. So it's a slightly heavier on the bottom, d d just for the uh, for the drop tuner. The drop tuner, and, and I've just got used to them now, and it's set yeah. up so nice. That, um, that's awesome. They're great. Yeah. Great. So that's my main that's favorite. The main, what a great bass. Come into the grave with me, bass. Yeah, absolutely. So. You've got, I mean, you've got another P bass as well. I understand that Fender, uh, 
Fender passed on to you recently? They did. They, they, I needed. I knew the one for the classic rock show, and they just bought out this new player series line. So I asked them, and they kindly gave me one. So that's amazing. Nice the only thing I did is I swapped the pickups for the same pickups I've got in there. Yeah. The SPB ones, because I don't really use this jazz pickup, and it's got the, all the active stuff in there, which sounds great, but it's just not me. It's not really your. Vibe. I just like the the consistency that knowing I literally plug this bass in it's virtually identical to that yeah. one. and is this an American made one yeah it's American yeah. I believe okay. I think it's Amer Mexican. I think it's possibly the one where yeah. it's yeah, yeah kind of halfway yeah. house job but, but I mean I have a feel the, the neck finish is great on it it's a lovely instrument nice yeah. and kind of medium weight yeah yeah great yeah, this thing weighs a bit more yeah oh it's lovely I would say I'm, the only difference is because this is so well played in the fret is yeah. virtually fretless and it feels great, whereas, whereas these obviously are brand new, so it's a bit jumbo fretish. And you tend on. to prefer the maple boards on bases, do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, just quite a, like that. Yeah, personal preference. Yeah. Yeah, and you use that, you're using that with a drop tuning on this, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, so this is, I've got these strings regularly tuned, um, ADG, and this one's a drop C for the. Uh, for for I'm the so afraid. I'm so afraid, yeah. Because just studying some videos, it looked like that's what John McVie was doing, so yeah. I thought, well. Great. I've got a. I mean, I could have done it on the on, on the five string I've got here, but it just sounds more like the original with a P bass. Yeah, of so. course. Well, that's a great bass. Talking of the five string, let's have a little look at that. Yep. So when I was with Robin Gibb, this was my main bass because I needed a five string on yeah. that. For those of people who don't know, Robin Gibb, of course, was one of the three Bee Gees. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. I played with him for ten years till he unfortunately passed in 2012. I think it yeah. was. Um, yeah, so I needed a five, um, and I got a deal with Ernie Ball, and he sent me this. And again, cat the experience guitars got hold of it. We put a brass nut in. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure why we did that, but we thought it was a good idea at the time. Yeah, <laughs> it's just you know <laughs> these things you do yeah, to guitars. Exactly. Uh, and this is a great bass, and I've just used this on a. I've just been on a European tour with a band called Holy Mother, a metal band. Yeah. Uh, and I use this all the way through, so yeah, because that again needed a five string, and it's a five string music man. It's great. Yeah, it's yeah. what you need, and it's got the the kind of yeah. the old black aesthetic and yeah, the, exactly the yeah. whole thing. Pickups are all original, and the, I mean it's pretty much a stock yeah, bass, isn't it? Just a stock bass. I don't, you know, why why change it? Yeah, that's great. Absolutely. I mean, you've got this is active, and you've got that much coloration in all this, but again, everything's flat. What really. do this? What does the switch do on a music man? Right, I, so I believe this one takes it. If you want it to sound more like a jazz bass, you go there. Yeah. If you want to sound it more like a precision bass, you go there. Right. And that's probably somewhere in between. So it's kind of series parallels now, and coil taps. Exactly. Things, yeah. These things that I never get into. Yeah. You know? And other than that, um, obviously we're using it for rooms on fire. Yes. So it sounds quite five string jazz bass to me. Yes. So that's why I've got it on that setting and the rest of the EQ is flat. Great. So, awesome. It's a great sounding bass though. I like it. It's a lot. Yeah. It's lovely to play as well. Yeah. I'm not a huge five-string man, but when you, know, you do, that's, do that, yeah. that's the thing. This is the one. Yeah. And finally, you've got a fretless bass that you've been pulling out for this, haven't you? And well, this, this certainly looks like it's been modified quite a lot <laughs> over the years. Well, this I, I went to Australia when I was about 26 after a band I was in split up, and uh, we were like, ah, oh, you know. Yeah. So we had a year out. Went to Australia. Uh, I needed a bass. I had a deal with Fernandez at the time. Right. Do, uh, got, and I took a, one of those, I can't travel anywhere without a bass, so I took this Fernandez five string bass with me, which is great. It got stolen after a gig, you know, because uh, uh, in uh, Brisbane, I think I was, so it's still somewhere in the Brisbane area, I've never found it. So look out for yeah. a five string Fernandez in Of course Brisbane. it's black, yeah. it looks just like that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I, I went down to a music shop, I didn't have much money, and they got a fretless Yamaha RBX there, and it was black at the time and uh, they wanted virtually nothing for it because nobody wanted a fretless at that time and i was like well great i'll have that and happy I'll... days so then really exclusively for about two years i played fretless oh, wow. and um it was great for getting that together now over the years i've swapped everything out of course yeah uh and this has now got some dimaggio willpower pickups in which i did try in the in the p base and it just didn't work not quite there so i thought well i've got a Put them somewhere so yeah. I, I put them here and it, it works well it it's sounds really different. balanced and lovely are you using yeah. flat wound strings on the fingers? i am this, these are rotor sound jazz bass strings right yeah and tell me about this big bad boy here well this was in the days of trying to be billy sheer and this was the ebo pickup that used to be in that bass when i 
Billy Sheehan yeah, fat in face. The front, in the front position, yeah. yeah. And that used to have a tremolo on it, and it used to be... The uh, Yeah, it used to have the, the oh. Kayla tremolo, and it used to have the, the dual output thing. So this is way back in like, 1992, you know? Um, you know, that's so cool. That fad lasted and it went, <laughs> you know, uh, and then realised I had to become, you know, I mean, Billy's Billy, he's got yeah. the Billy jobs. <laughs> of know? course. So, uh, so anyway, yeah, so that just became, I need to make that a Yeah, yeah, base. backs up eBay. So yeah. this hung around doing nothing for a long time until this year on the Classic Rock Show tour, we were doing uh, Black Velvet. Oh yeah. And that needed a more of a, a jazz bassy kind of sound because I don't think it's actually a real bass on that. I think it's a synth bass. Yeah, it's got but it sounds almost like the Jacko back position thing, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. It does, yeah. So and I didn't have one of them, but I had this line around. So I went over again to Cat at Experience Guitars and says, Can you do anything with this? And and uh, and she went, Yeah, and put it there. In it went. And in it went. And when I just play that just on its own, I'm not using that for this gig, but um but yeah, it's got a really nice, it's like a jazz bass, but slightly warmer. Yeah. So it's just different. I can so understand that. And you've got, so is this volume tone again, or is this two volumes? Just two volumes. Yeah. No, no tone. No tone. On. So for this gig, because, you know, John McVie, he, he's playing a fretless, but it's not in that traditional fretless way. It's more like you can't tell it's a fretless. No, of course. Um, which is actually harder to do. I yes. believe. <laughs> um, uh, I'm just using the, the, the P pickle. Okay, the, and, uh, and what a lot of people don't know is that John McVie used a fretless on the chain. Yeah. You have a big bass solo from the Formula yeah, One exactly, that everybody yeah. knows. So that's, you're using that, this for that for song. That. Yeah. And you're using this for as long as you follow, aren't you, and a couple of other tunes. Yeah, as long as you follow and Sarah. Yeah. Uh, and Will Turning. Yes, on that. of course. I'm not sure whether he did or not in the original thing, but yeah. you, you guys have been but it's, doing it yeah, with it's got, Etienne. And, yeah, it's got a nice bit of vibe. Sounds great. Yeah. yeah, if you want to see Etienne, our other bass player, who's just taking a break at the moment, he's uh, the he's on the other rig rundown, which I'll link on the screen. Uh, the great player, yeah. really great player. We love Etienne. He's, yeah. he's on the channel a lot. Yeah. He keeps popping up. Yeah, he's, he's a good lad. <laughs> Tell us what you're running, because we're running virtually no amps. I mean, I've, I've just been chatting about my little amp setup, but you're not you're an amp egg and door C, aren't you? But you've not got a rig. I you? am. Well, this for this gig and quite a lot of gigs at the moment. There's there's no backline. Yeah, so which is happening more and more, isn't it? These it days? really is, yeah. So let's have a little look at the pedal board that you're using, Wayne. Yeah. So it's it's super simple, isn't it? Really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, this is it with me. It's yeah. more the less is more kind yeah. of thing nowadays. I go straight into the poly tune here, which works as a, a mute as well. So yeah. Really handy. Straight into a Cali 76, uh, which I've got set up here like that. Our old sound engineer Pelle yeah. set that up for me yeah. years ago, and I've never Shout changed it. Shout out to Andrea. Yeah. yeah, never changed it because I've just thought, well, he knows what he's doing. It all sounded great. I'm yeah. like, great. <laughs> I don't need to know what that's about then. And the next one is a song-specific effect, isn't it? The MXR. It is. I bought this just for the uh, Oh it? Daddy, isn't oh, it? Oh Daddy, yeah. yeah. Uh, which you yourself set up <laughs> for me. <laughs> it's just it's just a little kind of cascading delay that they put on in post yeah, in the exactly, original. Yeah. Tell me, you've got the Tech 21, the Steve Harris pedal for all I those. am, which, which I actually am not really using, so it doesn't really need to be on the board, to be honest. It was just on there because I use it in various other shows. Yeah, and, of course. Uh, it's there. It's this one I'm actually using. And as you can see, the EQ setup is this. It's pretty which, much flat, Which isn't is it? flat and just taking a little bit of the drive off for the particular. Yeah, it's a great consistent sound and it's it's been a real pleasure to get to play with you, Wayne. So we're looking Thank forward you. to doing you a few too. more dates. Yeah. Thanks so yeah. much for doing this. No problem. Nice one. Thanks so much for watching. If you've got value out of this video, I would love it if you consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, ring the bell icon because it will let you know when I release new videos, which I do every single week. Huge thanks to Wayne Banks and I'm going to link his socials in the description below. Cheers, guys. I'll catch you soon.